What makes a good assessment? Assessment Performance Review Welcome to the eighth of a series of video presentations which have been put together by Alpha Plus Consultancy with support from EEF and in partnership with the British Council and CBSE. These video presentations cover key aspects of a series of training courses which we have been delivering to teachers and CBSE staff to support end-of-class assessments that we have designed. These end-of-class assessments are for English reading, maths and science for classes 6 to 10. In this video, we will be looking at some of the statistical tools available for the review of assessment performance at both item level and whole assessment level and explore why this review is important. As we saw in video 1, an assessment has to balance the three main requirements of validity, reliability and manageability. When reviewing the performance of an assessment, aspects of these three requirements need to be considered. The sorts of requirements you might want to ask include Did the items test what they were intended to test? Did the items perform as expected? Did more able students get higher marks on this item? How reliable was the marking? Could all the questions be completed in the time allowed? Were the mark schemes easy to apply? These are just examples of the questions you could ask. The key to understanding the performance of assessments is the numerical analysis of items and whole assessments. The analysis of item and assessment performance is important as it closes the assessment loop. This analysis only tells you if you have a problem, not what the cause of the problem is and assessment expertise is required to then investigate the item or assessment to determine why it is not working and identify changes to make. These changes might be to the assessment specification and blueprint, to the item writing approach, or actually amending items if a banking approach is being used. If you understand the way your assessment performs, you can identify ways it could be better and make the changes. This is why we say good assessments are not born, they are made using the evidence to shape this making process. Analysis of assessments can be done at an item level or whole assessment level, and we will look at some aspects of this analysis in this video, though we will only scratch the surface of a huge topic. Item analysis has three key methods. Facility value, which is a measure of the difficulty of an item. Discrimination index, which is a measure of how well the item discriminates between less able and more able students. Distractor and mark distribution analysis, which use graphs to depict how students respond to objective questions and how marks are awarded on multiple mark questions. The facility value or facility index is a measure of how difficult the item is. It is a measure of how well the students who took the assessment performed, so is very much dependent on the nature of the cohort. If it is mostly able students, the facility value will be higher and the assessment will appear easy but if it is mostly weaker students, then the facility values will be lower and the assessment will appear harder. The scale is between naught and one, with naught meaning that no student scored any marks and the item is very hard, and one being all students scored full marks and the item is very easy. Generally, you would want a facility value of between 0.3 and 0.85 for items, as if they are outside of these values, they will be too hard or too easy. However, there will be times where you may want an item at the start of the assessment which is there to settle the students in and give them confidence so you would expect this to be very easy and hence have a high facility value. Facility values are relatively easy to calculate. For single mark items, the facility value is the proportion of students giving the correct answer. So, for multiple choice items, it is the proportion of students who selected the key. In the example shown, 90% of the students selected B, which is the key, and hence the facility value is 0.9, making it a very easy question. For multiple mark items, the facility value is the average mark scored by the students on the question as a proportion of the total marks. So, in the example, the average mark is 20 out of a total of 30, which gives a facility value of 0.67. Facility indices can be presented visually for multiple items, as in the graph shown. 
This shows the variation in facility values across the assessment and allows you to easily spot those items which are too easy, unless they are a settling question at the start of the assessment and too difficult. Whilst this doesn't tell you why they were too hard or too easy, it does tell you which items you should look at to try and understand why they might have performed this way. The item discrimination is a measure of the degree to which better students who achieve well on the assessment overall get the particular item correct. It is actually a measure of the correlation of the student's performance on an item with their performance overall. The range is from minus 1 to plus 1, where a score close to plus 1 shows that the item performs in the way that the test performs. A negative discrimination occurs where better students do less well on an item than weaker students. Negative correlations mean that there is a problem with the item. Low discrimination values of less than plus 0.3 indicate that something is probably wrong with an item, as a lot of students who score highly on the test get that item wrong. There may be a number of reasons for this. If it is a multiple choice item, then the key may be incorrectly recorded. This is particularly true if there is a negative discrimination. It is easy for poorly prepared students to guess the answer as there are clues in the question. This is more likely to be the case with multiple choice items which are badly written. Well prepared students give an incorrect answer as they probably read too much into the question and do not think it can be as straightforward as it is. The question is therefore not fair as it misleads the most able students and it is probably too easy. The assessment is very high or very low scoring, so it does not differentiate between students of different abilities and therefore the items do not discriminate well, as it is luck or chance which is a greater influence on score than true ability. Again, discrimination indices can be presented in graphical format for easy interpretation and identification of those items with low values. On the graph, you can see four items with low positive discrimination indices and one with a negative one. These are the items you would want to look at to see why they might not be performing as you would expect them to. In multiple choice questions, you can carry out distractor analysis to see how students have answered the question and look at the options that have been chosen. Not all distractors are equally plausible, but they have to be reasonably plausible, otherwise there is little point in having them as a distractor. For example, in this question, option D is so different from the other options and so much larger, it is not a plausible distractor. The facility value and discrimination index for this question may look okay, but the item is still not a good item as one of the distractors is not plausible. This causes a couple of problems. Implausible options do not contribute to the discrimination of the assessment. The option may as well not exist. The item is more guessable than the number of options would suggest as one option can be eliminated. Improving the distractors is the simplest way to improve the item. So remember that to be functional, a distractor must attract at least 5% of the students. Graphical representations of distractor analysis are commonly used as it is easy to see whether distractors are performing well. In this case, distractor D is not worth having as it is too easy to dismiss. Also, distractor A is a very strong distractor as more students chose this than the key. This may be okay if the discrimination is high and weaker students are choosing A as it is a common misconception. But if the discrimination is low, it may be that the distractor is poor or there is some other problem with the question. Mark distribution analysis looks at how the marks on multi-mark items are scored. In the graph, you can see the proportion of student answers that scored marks between 0 and 6. You can see that the mark distribution is very uneven, and marks 1, 3, and 5 are not scored very often. This odd distribution with dead marks often points to a problem in the way the mark scheme is designed or markers are trained to use it. Again, the item may look fine in terms of facility and discrimination, but it is not really working effectively. In fact, having six marks instead of three marks doesn't really contribute much to the assessment and hence it is a waste of the marks. Mark distribution graphs can also point to items which do not allow students to get full marks or where no students score naught, and in these cases it may indicate problems with a mark scheme being too stringent 
or too generous. So why are item statistics important? They tell you that there is likely to be a problem with an item and it will need investigating and amending and the learning shared with the item writers. Facility index. If every student answers an item right or wrong, it may as well not exist as it doesn't discriminate between students of different abilities. Discrimination index. Items that the most able students don't get right and the least able students do are problematic and are usually faulty in some way. Distractor analysis bar charts. Distractors no one chooses may as well not exist as they are not helping discriminate between students. Multi-mark item distribution. Mark categories no one achieves may as well be removed or the mark scheme needs to be revised as the marks are not being used to discriminate between students of different abilities. We have looked at item level statistics, but there are also some measures that we can use to look at how assessments perform as a whole. The basic assessment level statistics look at the mark distributions and are really just general statistics applied to an assessment regime, unlike the item level statistics. They include the mean mark, standard deviation of marks, skewness, kurtosis. There are others such as Cronbach Alpha, which is used to measure reliability, but we don't have time to look at these in this video. The distribution of the marks in an assessment are usually shown as line or bar graphs with the marks on the x-axis along the bottom and the frequency of the marks being scored in the assessment on the y-axis up the side. The way that the marks in an assessment should be distributed will depend on the purpose of the assessment. For academic assessments where there are multiple grades or where they are designed to be formative and show what the students know and can do, you want a broad distribution spread around the middle marks of the assessment. For vocational and professional assessments where we want to know if someone is competent to do a job, then the mark distribution often clusters around the level of competency desired as the assessment is not interested in the very able and the very weak students. The graph is narrower and peaks around the competency level required to maximize the opportunity to separate competent students from those who are not competent. We will look at academic assessments, as these are the ones used in schools where it is important to differentiate students of different abilities. The mean and the standard deviation of an assessment tell you something about how the assessment performs. The mean is just the average score for the students. A low mean is likely to be because the assessment is hard or the cohort of students are weak compared to a high mean where the assessment is easy or the cohort of students are strong. However, the mean only tells you about the central tendency and it doesn't tell you how that average is created from the different spreads of marks achieved. The standard deviation is a measure of the spread of marks. A higher standard deviation means that the marks are more spread out and the assessment better discriminates between students of different abilities. Ideally, you want a high standard deviation in academic assessments with multiple grades. Looking at the graph, you can see that both tests have the same mean of 100, but the standard deviation of the blue graph is much higher than that of the red graph. The blue graph is a more effective assessment at separating students of different abilities. If you have a low standard deviation, you need to look at the design of the assessment to see if you can produce items of differing demands so as to spread the marks out more. Low standard deviations often lead to reduced reliability of assessment as errors in marking are more likely to have an impact on outcomes than if the standard deviation was high. The skewness is a measure of how equally distributed the marks are within the distribution. If the distribution is even, the skewness is zero. If the distribution is negatively skewed, then the tail is to the left and peak to the right and the value is less than zero. If it is positively skewed, then the opposite is true. Negatively skewed distributions are usually because the assessment is too easy overall and positively skewed distributions are usually because it is too hard overall. Kurtosis means the proportion of marks in the tails. A normal distribution of marks has a kurtosis of zero. A distribution which is flatter than this has a kurtosis of less than zero 
and one which is more peaked has a kurtosis greater than zero. For academic assessments, the kurtosis should ideally be zero or less as the mark distribution will differentiate between students more effectively. So, why are these measures of assessment performance important? The mean is particularly useful when comparing different assessments or groups of students to see whether different questions are easier or harder or different groups of students more or less able, though it can sometimes be hard to untangle these two factors if there is no common feature. The standard deviation tells you whether the students are adequately spread out or not. If they're clumped up, the assessment isn't separating them out well and it can lead to problems with assessment reliability. Higher standard deviations are better. The skew tells you whether the top or bottom marks on the assessment are being used or not. If not, then they are not contributing, so you need to think about making the assessment harder or easier so that all marks are used. Kurtosis gives some information on whether all the marks are being used, so if it is much greater than zero and therefore highly peaked, then the marks aren't being used and therefore the assessment isn't spreading people out. All of these basic statistical measures can be used to evaluate the performance of the assessment and help improve the design for future assessments. As we said earlier, good assessments are made and not born. We hope you have found these videos useful and would like to thank you for taking the time to engage with them. Hopefully, aspects of them will help you think about how you create your own assessments and there might be some ideas that you can use. We would like to thank CBSE and the British Council for the opportunity to work with them on this project.